Welcome to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a good one teed up for you, but real quick, what is Harmonious and why are we talking about it? It is the disruptive business architecture that you need to know about to figure out all this content's flying at you in the world. Where does it go, right? Well, these 10 disciplines of your business that you need to master in order to scale and succeed in business and not pull your hair out along the way. Nobody wants that. So we're going to dive into an amazing episode. I'll put the title on the screen here, but this is something that I think is a hot topic these days and a lot of people feel, I know I've felt in the past and, and I wrestle with it day to day in different topics, but it is imposter syndrome, the antidote to imposter syndrome and the three O's to success. So we have an amazing guest lined up. I have her here with me. I'm excited to dive in. But first, Francisca, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, leader in community, even when we are the ones supporting others, we deal with our own imposter syndrome. So I'm just so mm. excited to have the opportunity to talk about this because I'm really hopeful that it'll resonate for your community. And, Today's talk, I will definitely give some actionable what you can do right now um, to, 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 to move the needle forward in the direction that you want to go. So thank you. for. I that. love that. Yeah. So if you're if you're at the gym, pause, pull your car over, get out your notepad, ready to dive in here now. So I always say that um, the, the three legged stool of business, right? It is business. Yes, that's important. We have the harmonious architecture, but then there's two other key concepts, and that is mind and body. And I think we are probably going to touch all three disciplines today a lot with imposter syndrome. Now, let's start. Let's just define this and, and set the ground for this conversation. How do you, in your own words, define imposter syndrome? One, it's part of the human experience. <clears throat> Two, it's when one loses connection with the trust they have in themselves. So uh, the antithesis of imposter syndrome could be seen as confidence, self-confidence. And it's not about having all the answers. That is not what self-confidence is. Actually, what it means is to have trust in oneself's ability. So when we navigate imposter syndrome, we are really challenged. Like our connection to our self-trust is really challenged. And so that's how I would define imposter syndrome. And um, through the course of all the years of my work, I've kind of wound it down to something that I hope really sticks, right? Um, the three O's to success. So it's just the lack of connection to the belief in ourself and how we can figure things out. Um, you know, there's, you can really tease it apart even more, but in the general term, it's part of the human experience, which means get used to it. And hopefully you find some tools to help you manage and get through those little rough waters when it does creep in. And secondly, it's just that the loss of connection to your trust in yourself. I mm. hope I summed that up pretty succinctly. <laughs> you did. And I'm, I'm glad I asked, honestly, because I've never heard anybody describe it like that. And the other thing that was so important that you highlighted is that it's part of the human experience. So if you're listening to this, you have imposter syndrome. You've either had it, have it, or will have it at some point. And the other thing that that triggers for me is that within the harmonious architecture, we're going to touch on two uh, important disciplines, and that is inspire, which is you yourself as a leader for the mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and business owners listening, and home, humans optimize in a meaningful environment. That's your people, your team, your employees. So we have to master imposter syndrome from both perspectives, helping ourselves and helping our teams get through it. I, I love this conversation. All right, so now that we have that understanding of, of what it is, what we're talking about, um, can we can we start to dive into the three O's a little bit? I'm curious how this, how this is gonna show up. You know, I, I like to uh, find things or at least package or deliver information so that one, it's digestible. It's not like this long saga that you have to wait three hours to kind of get to the final punchline. And also, you know, something that might stick. And the three O's um, to success are orient, ownership, and openness. So really clear, succinct. And now don't, don't get me wrong. It, it, it it's, 
simple but not complicated. Um, we have a tendency to love, we love to complicate things. Um, and I'm really hopeful that when a person goes, okay, what are the three O's? They're orient, ownership, openness. You know, you kind of keep it with all the O's, right? Because who doesn't like multiple O's? Woohoo! Uh, so, it's not that kind of show, but now it is. I love it. <laughs> it's the human experience, right? And we're, when we're dealing with entrepreneurship, creativity, leadership, how to stay connected to playfulness humility and to go for it to really just say you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna try and and through that we get to learn and so the first phase of this model is orient and and it's so interesting that you were highlighting the mind body component of the three legs you got business mind and body it turns out that um i'm actually a, a body-centered psychotherapist and so my training is steeped in the mind body continuum and how, and I'm also a board certified movement dance therapist. And so I weave in the body and how we move in the world to get what we want, right? How, how we actually move and our approach to learning influences our success. And so when you look at the first O, it's truly about mindfulness. It's the act of purposely paying attention. And when we have that internal like struggle, we tend to feel doubtful with my, uh, excuse me, with imposter syndrome. So how do you orient to, okay, how do I feel? Like, what are these feelings? And to orient to the reality that there's a complexity in life. And what do I mean by complexity is that there it's a both and concept rather than an either or. And so when we're orienting, typically the, our nervous system is here to A, keep us alive. And we have this thing called animal instinct. And thank goodness for it because we wouldn't be here as a species. But the work, the way I like to support both, you know, the individual, but also the entrepreneurial leader is to learn how to harness their animal instinct so that they are truly super powerful and, you know, they have humility. They're not arrogant. Right. And so orienting is really about how to pay attention to what is and trying to do your best without jumping to conclusions or interpretations, because our emotions, a.k.a. our animal instinct is here to keep us alive. And so we're so evolved with our brain. You know, we, we can critically think we can plan and organize. We actually utilize language and sometimes they kind of work against each other. And so with the orienting phase, it's just getting, it's, it's setting the stage to go, okay, wait, how do I feel? What's going on in my environment? Let me orient to the truth of things that I've accomplished in the past. I have a degree, higher ed, I run a business, you know, to really just start kind of not shoving aside, but lessening the loud noise of the emotional um, experience of doubt and fear because emotions love themselves. And so they just want to have like more the merrier. So if you're feeling nervous and if you just let that kind of run amok before you know it, you're scared, you're anxious, right? It can really in increase over time. So in the phase of orienting, it's like, okay, let me name it. And now let me name other things that are true. I'm feeling doubtful because, or I'm nervous because I'm going on a podcast, right? Oh, do I, am I going to stutter? I don't know. I, I'm a human, right? Probably I might. I might. So I'm already navigating my orienting phase, my skill of purposely paying attention to what's going on in the outside of me. And then also really tracking what's going on in the inside of me. And once you have a good sense of self in that respect where you're, you know, you're, you're a little more centered. And by the way, the three O's is an active experience. And one of the things I say repeatedly is that clarity comes from engagement. Competence comes from practice and confidence is the sum of both. So this model is intended to enhance your clarity, truly knock your, your skills out of the park because you're going to be competent. And by doing this work, you actually 
tackle those feelings of imposter syndrome and you, and you learn how to harness your energies. You, you know, you can compartmentalize way better. You actually get the stuff done that you don't really like to do because you're just like, Oh, I don't think I'm really good at it. Or, Oh, is it good enough? Um, so the orienting phase really just starts laying, sets the stage. And then once you're kind of like, you know, you have a good sense of, Oh, I'm feeling a little nervous right now. I got the butterflies in my belly and, but I've done this before. I've done this before. Okay. We step into the ownership phase and ownership is the work of harnessing your animal instinct and going, okay, yes, I'm nervous. And it's the both and experience, not either or, you know, it's not a black or white. It's the both and meaning. I'm sure you've seen the memes on social media with the pictures that say, I am vulnerable and scared, right? It, it, it's that concept because yeah. in ownership, that's what this is about. It's how do I support myself to be connected to the positive and the negative realities of what's going on in my life? not the fantasy, not the irrational belief, not, you know, the boogie monster of like, oh, I've never done it. So I'm going to be like, oh, no. And it can really slow a, a person's success down. And that's the challenge of ownership, because our animal instinct is here to track what is potential threat. It's a fact. Yeah. Learn to embrace because it, without it, we would not be here as a species. And the the work, the heavy lifting of ownership is to say, OK, I'm totally paying attention to the fact that I'm freaking out right now. I'm like, I'm super nervous. I don't think it's good enough. But the reality is that there is so much more happening simultaneously at the same time that is true as well. And it's that work, it, it's that balancing act of, okay, yeah, you have your feeling of imposter syndrome. You're not good enough. You're doubting yourself. You're thinking that you feel like you're an imposter and you're going to be found out. That's part of it, right? Like, oh, they're going to find out that I, I'm not really good at this. Like, oh God, I'm going to lose my job. Or, you know, say a leader in an organization is, is so scared of public speaking and they have to run meetings all like often, you know, that can really challenge them and it throws a person off their game. But in the ownership phase, it's wait a second. Okay. So I'm nervous right now and I've done this at least 20 times. Okay. Another little hack here, because we are wired to have sensations, which actually are emotions. When you break it down to just little data points, our emotions are nothing but sensations. They just cluster together. And before you know it, you, you, ever, you ever see those connect the dot little puzzles, like one mm -hmm. connect the dot, and then you have the little, the little kitty cat, you know, holding the, the balloons or something. Well, our sensations, when you start connecting these dots, our brains like work at such like super speed lightning, they interpret things because we need to stay alive, believe it or not. But one of the little hacks that you can do is, yes, um, you can feel into the emotion, but you don't want to let them run the show. You want to be in reality and you want it to be like unemotional, like mundane, the obvious, like I'm a brunette. I have brown eyes. Check. That's true. That's reality. My name is Francisca Mix. Check. That's true. OK, I I'm feeling a little nervous. OK, check. That's true. And I've also done podcasts before. Check, that's true. So finding this balance of what are other realities in your life that, you know, your accomplishments, feedback that you've heard, all the way to your physical attributes that aren't attached to emotion. Because we want to play a trick on our brain a little bit so that we learn to find that balance and validate our experience as best as we can without letting those pesky little, you know, the negative emotions that really stall our success at times. So that's the ownership phase. Do a little checklist. What's a reality? I wear glasses. Check. I'm a woman. Check. I'm a mom. Check. Right. That brings some emotion when I say that. But, you know, I have a teenager. So um, 
So yeah, the ownership phase, it's really working that edge of that both and. I'm nervous and I'm a brunette. I'm nervous and I've done this before. And when you find that balance, it tends to soften the edge. And the more you practice this, the more competent you become with this practice. And what ends up happening is that imposter syndrome or the stall or the slow or the hurdle, it doesn't grow and become Mount Everest, but also you get through it a lot faster as well. It's almost like cardiovascular workout, right? The more you jog, you know, you're more effective and efficient. And so this is actually a practice when dealing with doubt, imposter syndrome, or just the, I don't feel like it right now, or, or just the things that we face as, as business owners and, and leaders. So that's the second O. Yeah. There was a, a bajillion and a half tips there. So I didn't lie in the beginning. I said, take notes, get ready for this. And you absolutely delivered. Um, I'm going to try that the next time I have imposters, I'm going to use your tip. I'm going to say, I'm a woman and I'm a mother and I'm going to see where that gets me. I don't, maybe, maybe it won't help. We'll see. That, maybe not. You got to be connected to your reality. Okay. So I missed that part of the notes. Awesome. I'll dial that in. But I want to talk about that real quick. I want to dive in there. And I also want to put on the screen, I know you have some resources on your website, uh, franciscacc.com. Um, we can talk about those resources in a second, but I want to, I want to dive in psychologically because I think what, what many people would have heard, especially as business owners, we're trying to find the loopholes, right? And entrepreneurs, um, you speak the truth and you focus on things you have done. What about when those things don't relate to what you are about to do? So we'll use the public speaking, the meetings, whatever that may be, the podcast. If you've never spoken in public, if you, and you're telling this yourself, this in your head, you've never spoken in public. You've never been on a podcast. You, you haven't even so much as sent a Snapchat video to somebody like you've never, ever communicated publicly. What, how can you focus on and trick your brain in, in that scenario to get over that imposter syndrome? One, that actually, I would say that fully, that is not fully the truth because we communicate in public all the time, hmm. all the time. And it, it, it's interesting because it's like, I've never done this. It's like, okay, wait, let me orient to what I'm actually doing. So I'll be talking. I've talked to people, um, I order, I go to restaurants and I order the, you know, whatever, whatever, my favorite smothered burrito. I, I go to the, you know, the counter and I, I'm doing public speaking and, and it's just challenging some concepts that we hold and try to expand the meaning of that because we've all done public speaking somehow, some way. I mean, we're doing that. You know, I have my kids, you know, who are like five going, you know, we, 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 we nudge. So we've been doing public speaking for quite some time. Another thing that really does support the process is working with a mentor or a consultant, because being witnessed in our growth is very, very important to build the, that our internal compass of our self-confidence. There's actually a phase in human growth and development that requires a witness. Hey, mom, look at me. Look at me. I'm going up the ladder one step at a time. They're going to say, look at me. Look at me. This is amazing. Woo, I go down the slide. And as adults, we lose sight of that. I mean, we are growing identities when we're doing new things for the very first time. Period. Mm. We're growing. So yeah. It's pretty important to understand that that is not the comfort zone. That won't change. The growth zone doesn't become the comfort zone unless you've been working those edges and you have gained some experience, you've learned some lessons, and you were witnessed and you were given feedback and you've done it a couple of times. Eventually, you become unconsciously competent with it. Right. And so when it comes to the, the example of public speaking, I say, challenge yourself. Like, have you never done that? I just broke that one down. Didn't I? Yeah. It's like you order, you, you, you go to McDonald's or whatever, whatever favorite restaurant, bar, library, uh, excuse me, you know, 
we're constantly in public speaking. Um, so number one, challenge the concepts a little bit, orient, slow down to go, okay, wait a second, public speaking. Have I ever done that? Actually, I have. All right. Number two, there's a reality to learning and it's uncomfortable. Like I just mentioned, it's the growth zone. It's not comfy zone with your fleeces and your little pint of Ben and Jerry's and, you know, your favorite whatever Netflix show. I mean, that's comfortable, meaning you know it, you have a sense of mastery. You don't even think about it. You don't have to think about brushing your teeth. You're unconscious, you know, you're, you're unconsciously competent. You don't even think about it. There's no energy going there. So also knowing that if it's something new, it's going to be awkward. Now it's important to know it's not because you're awkward. It's just because it's something new. Hmm. It's just because it's something new. Like I, with, with children who are trying, you know, their palates change over, over, over the course of our lives. And when they're trying new things, they're like, Oh, this is weird. And I'm like, no, that's not the word. You get to say this is different. And believe it or not, with children and our taste buds, it takes about 10 to 15 tries of tasting before you can honestly formulate an opinion if you like it or if you don't. And so, again, there's a little bit of like a challenge of I'm going to feel awkward. I'm in the growth zone. How to name it? Name it. I'm in the growth zone. If I, I'm going to leave this meeting that I've never led a meeting, I've never led a meeting but I've done public speaking and I'm going to feel awkward because it's new. It's not because I am awkward. There isn't a lack or a less than in me just because I'm awkward. It's like when you learn something new, it's awkward. You know, that's why I have clients. I'll be like, okay, I'd like for you to brush your teeth for a week with your non-dominant hand. I'm going to actively put you in an awkward (laughs) state so that you become comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's part of learning. And so when you work with a consultant or a mentor or you've got a colleague that you, you know what I mean? You've got like an accountability partner. It truly moves the needle forward in such a way because you're witnessed and you're reflected. Like, don't forget you're in the growth zone. Be as awkward as you can feel, like as much as you can bring on because it's going to change over time. I promise. Yeah, that's, so, that's amazing. And well, thank you for that too. But the, my two big, I think big takeaways from, from this conversation, which has been very, very insightful is one, it's the human experience. Every single person has had, does have, will have imposter syndrome. You will have it multiple times, get used to it. But the second key is that everything great happens in and because of the growth zone. You can't, grow a company doing the same things you did last week or last year. We always talk about that at What If. In order to do something bigger, different, better, you have to be bigger, different, better. So you have to get uncomfortable, maximize that, harness that, leverage it, and you can have really positive results on the backside. So um, we got to wrap this episode up. Francisca, thank you. We got to two of the three O's. Your website's on the screen. Who needs to go to your website? And why should they go there to learn about the third O? Well, anybody who's interested in stepping into the growth zone with some um, accountability and adventure and playfulness. Like if you're interested, if this stuff is resonating with you, because I'm really weaving in that body-based natural animal instinct and how to learn how to harness that life force so that you continue to keep growing and and wowing and having the impact that you want, then you might want to come visit. You might want to come. And and for those in mental health, I do have a a private practice jumpstart checklist to just ease you in to the new role and identity as a business owner. So I work with Um, you know, executives. I work with mental health professionals who are interested in learning about business and and engaging and creating and developing their new identity as an entrepreneur business owner. So amazing. Well, if this resonated, yes, definitely go check out her website. This has been fantastic. I know I took a lot from this, a lot of eye-opening insights that I absolutely loved having. So um, for those of you listening, yeah, the harmonious architecture we talked about, I said it in the beginning, home, and inspire you and your people, but also 
very, very important, the mind and the body. This all centers on your mind, your mindset, your, how you tackle new opportunities, new challenges, and of course, bringing your team with you and through that. They're not going to want to fo uh, follow somebody who acts as an imposter. It's just not going to happen. So to be a good leader, to truly inspire, you need to help yourself. You need to help your team. And Francisca can help you get there. So Francisca, thank you again for coming. This has been an awesome episode. And for those of you listening, watching, wherever you are, subscribe, hit the like button, leave your comments, your feedback, your questions. I want to know all about it. I'll pass them along to Francisca. We will get that stuff answered and we'll see you on the next episode.